Welcome to How Might We Work. My name is Hiroko. I'm a product designer from Unext. I'm going to be your moderator of this event today. Today, for the episode one of How Might We Work, we are going to discuss about what if we are able to speak good level of English, how our career opportunity would change and grow. Today, we invited special four guests who are grown up in Japan and have learned, studied English as a second language. And they are now working as a creative successfully in an international environment. Hi, everybody. How are you today? Good. Good. Thank you. Uh, could you introduce yourself from uh, Heidi Hairo? Sure. Uh, hi, Haiji. Uh, Haiji is kind of like uh, my handle in Japanese, but when I speak in English, I introduce myself as Namika, which is my real name. And then I, I live in San Francisco, the United States, and then I'm a brand and a product designer. Uh, actually, this is my first time to uh, present uh, something in English, so I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm also excited to be here. Thank you for joining today. And the next is uh, Tomohiro Suzuki. Tomo, yeah. could you introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, hi, uh, I am Tomohiro Suzuki, uh, but uh, I am called Tomo from my friends and uh, co-workers who speak English. I'm working as a senior product designer at All Tatos. Uh, it's the same company with Haiji. And uh, thanks for having me today. Um, I'm so excited this event. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And next is uh, Takahiko Ono. Tak. How hi. are you today? <laughs> Great, thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, this is Tak Ono. I'm, uh, I have a two business, uh, two jobs right now. Um, uh, first job is uh, director of uh, venture capital fund called Glovis Capital Partners, and another one is uh, my own company uh, doing a uh, you know, sports, um, sports marketing, sports business uh, called So Good Group. Uh, I'm so honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. We are very excited to hear your stories. Okay, so let me introduce about the purpose of today's event before we start. So today, we our event is how might we work? We're going to talk about if we could speak good English, what our job opportunity could change. But we set one very simple rule. Do not talk in Japanese. So we are all Japanese, but we're going to try just only talking English today. And why is that? 
is that uh, we we think that Japanese many Japanese people are actually very scared to talk in English because they are very scared to have mistakes and we believe that speaking perfect English is not actually essential to work in English English is a communication skills and as long as we can understand each other it's okay to have mistakes and uh, so that we hope uh, from uh, after this event you're gonna have a bit more confidence to talk in English and uh, please enjoy so today uh, everybody talk about why they start studying English how they improved and how they got the job in the international environment and uh, what is a good point what is the advantage what do you like what you don't like blah blah anything like that so let's get started uh, you ready Heidi you we start from yeah, uh, you sure uh, let me set up so I'm gonna share my screen Please wait a moment. Sure. Uh, can you see my screen? Like it yes. says, hi, I'm an Amica. Yes, I can see it. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. Thank you. So please start. Sure. Hi, I'm an Amica. Um, thank you for having me today and then um, Thank you for watching this event. Uh, before sharing my story, let me introduce myself. I'm a brand and product designer. I was born and raised in Niigata. I lived in Kyoto and Tokyo. And currently, I'm living in San Francisco, the United States. And I'm working at all puddles. Actually, this is the most difficult pronunciation for me. Turtles. <laughs> yeah. It's a startup studio, and uh, we currently hold ourselves as a mission driven product studio. Team is distributed across the US and Japan. I belong to the US team. As a brand designer, I make logos and visual design stuff. As a product designer, um, I make digital products. It's a healthcare app. Uh, this might be interesting for you. It's kind of like game app, but you can practice your pronunciation with twisty tongue. Uh, it's Hayakuchi Kotoba in Japanese. Then, uh, besides those work, um, in this last June, I published a book called Designer no Eigocho. The English uh, subtitle is How Might We Learn English as a Designer? Then, this book is about, is about the words that designers often use. And phrases uh, contextualizing uh, design process. I wrote it up not because I was good at English, but because uh, this is what I wanted. So today, uh, I'm going to share my journey of becoming who I am today. Why and how, how did I learn English? What did I experience before writing the book? What did I learn from that? Uh, let us start by looking at why I started learning English. Three years ago, I moved to San Francisco because uh, my husband had lived in here. And then we got married and then I decided moving. At that point, I actually couldn't speak in English. I mean, 
I was able to say some phrases like, thank you,、uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, but that's it.、Uh, I even didn't know a phrase to order a coffee at the cafes.、Uh, I would ask a friend of mine to order a coffee instead of, mine, instead of me. And then、uh, I went to、um, ESL school,、um, English learning school. Looking back, I found three motivations that drove me to learn English.、Uh, the first one、uh, is frustration.、Um, when I entered the school, I took a replacement test. Then the result、uh, was、uh, terrible. My class was the lowest level. You know. And then one day,、uh, we made a group、uh, out of two people. A teacher gave us a paper. And then we asked a question on that paper each other. And then when my partner asked me a question, I, I couldn't catch what he said, or I didn't know. I mean, I knew the word on that paper, but I guess his pronunciation wasn't right or、uh, it was different from ours, so I didn't understand. Also, I, I didn't know how to convey that. So I was silent. I couldn't say anything. Then, when he saw that, he laughed at me.、Uh, now, I would say、uh, I can't find my words, or I couldn't catch what you said. Could you say that again? But、um, yeah, at that time, I felt discouragement that he laughed at me, or rather, I got frustrated that I wasn't able to express my thoughts or feelings.、Um, that's a sad moment, but actually, it was a good thing in terms of learning English because when I lived in Japan, I didn't have any thoughts or feelings that I wanted to convey. So,、uh, what I learned from that. Is turn frustration into motivation. And then the second one,、uh, the second motivation was I wanted to make designer friends. In the class, I would introduce myself as, like, hi, I'm a designer making mobile apps. But My classmates didn't know the word apps. It wasn't a common topic. I also realized that I'm a,、uh, I was an introverted person. And even when I spoke in my mother tongue, I wasn't comfortable speaking except talking about the design. So to practice English, I thought I had to go to a place where people have the same knowledge and interests, like、uh, people who are in the、uh, similar industry or having the same job. That brought me to Tradecraft、uh, Design School in San Francisco. It's a product design. Apprenticeship program that's a combination of hands on project work for startups.、And、then I met designers, many designers, as I hoped. However, I had cried every night for the first two weeks because almost all my cohorts were native English speakers. Their speak was fast. I couldn't get what they said at all. It's not surprising because I had just learned English for six weeks at the ESL school. 
and then I hadn't had enough communication with native speakers. So how did I learn English? These are the pictures of lectures. What I did was every time I run into a new word, I jot it down and looked up the word in a dictionary. You know, while uh, others uh, are taking a note, note about design, I took a note about English. <laughs> I also read books about design. Some books have a Japanese version, so I brought uh, I bought both versions. That allowed me to compare the Japanese and English. And then I read the Japanese version first, and then later I read the English version. So um, I could understand what the book says, then after that, uh, reading the English version. And then I did the same thing. Every time I run into a word in the books, I jotted it down. I used to uh, read a vocabulary book. It wasn't fascinating for me. I don't mean the book wasn't good, but I just didn't know how to utilize it. And it was hard to memorize the words on it. I wondered when and where I, I would use those words. But the words I met on the design books, although I didn't know the meaning of them at that point, I could see the context of the writings and I could imagine the meaning. So that attracted me to learn English. What I learned from that is learn English through design. This can be applied to any case. You can replace the design with your interest. It could be programming, it could be marketing, it could be business, so it could be anything. Just learn English through your interest. The third one, um, I spent in trade craft, the school, for three months. After graduated it, I wanted to get a job in the US. And I was trying to challenge myself. I wanted to identify my ability, not only in English, but also in design. Here are some screenshots of the job description of product designers in tech company in Bay Area. My blocker was uh, you know, strong communication were always required, must have. That made me anxious. Then here's the common job interview process. Uh, phone interview, portfolio presentation, design critique, design exercise, and another interview. So there are many steps. Writing, speaking, listening. I had to improve those skills rapidly. This is a summary of my job hunting. I took many interviews. And every time I was rejected or took a mistake, I improved that for next time. Uh, this is my notes of what I couldn't answer in interviews. I prepared the answer for the next interview. So improved that. And then here's my portfolio deck. This is version three or four. As I iterated the portfolio presentation, I defined it. 
if I had been waiting for job hunting until I achieved my English skills, until my English、uh, was perfect, I would have n t got the current job. So, job hunting pushed me to grow. A lesson、uh, clear and a strong goal of learning leads you to the achievement of it. Um, although it was a hard process,、uh, I did my best because I had a clear、uh, goal that、uh, getting a job in the US. Lastly, I'd like to share with you this learning English. Boost your opportunities. For me, I got the job, but it's not the only thing. I also got featured on Figma blog. Figma is a design tool.、Um, I posted my graphic patterns on d o r b o d o r b o is a、um, Online uh, create, uh, creative portfolio platform. And a member of Figma saw my artworks and he reached out to me. If I hadn't posted my work in English, they would have n t noticed me. Or if I hadn't learned English, I could have n t Replied to them. This is just an example, but definitely learning English expanded my opportunities. Posting something in English increases audiences.、Um, that's a summary of my talk.、Uh, Turn frustration into motivation.、Uh, you may take a mistake, or、uh, you, you may feel frustration、uh, that you couldn't convey your thoughts, but、uh, make that、uh, your motivation to learn English. And then learn English through your interests. And then a career and a strong goal of learning leads you to the achievement of it. And then learning English boosts your opportunities. I'd like to finish my talk with a question for you. Please fill the blank with what's relevant to you. How might we learn English as a designer? How might we learn English as an engineer? How might we learn English as a marketer? How might we learn English as a business person? I'm still halfway through learning English, but let's think about it and let's do it together. So, Uh, thank you for listening. So, so that's it、uh, from me. Thank you so much,、um, Namika. It is quite interesting that you learned English and you cried every night.、Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine I had a quite similar experience. So, <laughs> thank you so much. So, next up is Tomo. Tomo, are you there? Yes, sure. Sorry.、Uh, okay, I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, thank you so much.、Uh, please start whenever you are ready.、Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, yes I, can see. I can see. Okay, so let's get started.、Uh, so, today、um, I'd like to talk about how I learned English and、uh, How it affected to my life.、Uh, so let's get started. 
Uh, first, uh, let me introduce myself quickly so that you can know who am I. Uh, I am Tomohiro Suzuki, uh, but I am called Tomo from my friends and co-workers who speak English. Uh, I am working as a senior product designer at Ortados. Our headquarters is in San Francisco uh, and I am belonging to the Japanese branch. But currently I am living in Osaka. Uh, actually, we had a Tokyo office in WeWork, uh, but due to the current COVID situations, we just unsubscribed our plan in June, and all members work remotely now. So, I moved to Osaka a few months ago, and I have been learning English since 2017. So, it is almost four years. There are some good things by learning English. Uh, let me introduce some. One is that uh, I got many friends all over the world, mainly in the Philippines, uh, Germany, and the United States, uh, where I visited frequently or lived for a while. One of my best friends in the US uh, is my coworker and also a designer, who I have a big respect for him. And the last time I visited the US last year, uh, we traveled to his hometown and stayed there. Uh, it was a very fun moment and uh, quite nice experience for me. And another memory was uh, I got a girlfriend in Philippines. So, and she was uh, actually my teacher in my English school. So I got a relationship with her uh, while I was in the school. Uh, actually, I didn't remember how I could tell her my love uh, because I couldn't speak English well. But maybe uh, she could understand uh, as she was a teacher and uh, familiar with Japanese English. Um, she could speak only English and uh, Tagalog, uh, so it became uh, one of my motivation to learn English. After studying in school, uh, I lived in Philippines with her for three months. Actually, uh, we have already broken up, uh, but we are still a good friend and uh, it was a fun time for me. Yay! Okay, and uh, the last thing is uh, I could join All Turtles. Uh, when I joined All Turtles in 2018, uh, it was just a uh, lucky and uh, nice timing. Actually, I didn't think to work in a foreign company, and but there was a good opportunity uh, when I came back to Japan from Philippines. Uh, it was a time when the Tokyo office was about to launch, and uh, they were looking for a designer who can speak English. Uh, my friend uh, introduced me to a Japanese general manager, and I decided to join all titles. So I just I suggest you post on SNS uh, that uh, if you are learning English, uh, there might be uh, good opportunities. In my company, there are many experienced designers, including Namika. So we are usually assigned to two or three designers to one project, and they have different strong points and work style. It is quite interesting to work with them, and I was not good at English uh, when I joined All Turtles, uh, but luckily uh, I'm a designer, so I could tell them about uh, my work by showing my designs. And I think the business speed is uh, different from Japan. Um, it changes quite often, sometimes, yeah. Uh, it is sometimes it is hard for designers, uh, especially uh, in the prototyping phase, uh, but I think it's really good and it's interesting. Uh, also, the working style is quite flexible. Uh, for example, I worked in a Berlin office from last year to this March. Uh, even though it was just my personal reason uh, that I wanted to work abroad. Um, in 2018, after I joined uh, All Turtles, I worked while traveling around the world for three months. 
Now, sometimes uh, the time zone and the jet lags are really hard though, uh, but it's really good to balance life and work. Yeah, I love this company. And this is one of the main projects that I am currently working on. Uh, it is a startup uh, developing a device for elder care facility. It's a Kaigo Sets in Japanese. It has a small sensitive radar inside, uh, which can detect uh, human activities uh, such as heart rate, uh, breathing rate, sleeping, uh, position, and etc. So uh, it is very uh, privacy friendly device uh, compared to wearable devices and cameras. The founders are American, but they are focusing on the Japanese elder care industry. So Japanese members are supporting the uh, localization and the product development. As a designer, I'm in charge of user research in Japan and interface design for the digital product. This is my first time working on an IoT project, uh, but it's quite interesting and uh, there are many things to run new. And actually, uh, my father had a heart attack a few years ago. He was survived rapidly and totally fine now, uh, but I was very shocked when I heard that. So I hope to install this device to his room uh, someday. Yeah, this is one of my motivation. So I'd like to talk about why I started learning English. The turning point was in 2015 when I visited London for the first time. Until that time, I've never interested to learning English. Actually, I didn't like English, or I can say I hate English. I remember, I remember uh, when I was in high school, I always left English subject, and I dropped out of university in the second grade. So my English skill level was quite poor, yeah, I can say almost nothing. But I have been to London to meet with my friends who uh, who was at university in there. And to be honest, I thought traveling abroad will be easy. Uh, however, it was harder than I thought. First, I didn't know what is the immigration card. Um, I realized it is necessary when I arrived at the airport in London. So I had to fill it out, but couldn't read it. Also, I didn't even know how to connect to the Wi-Fi at the airport, so I couldn't use Google Translate. Uh, so I remember it took 30 minutes just writing the immigration code. Yeah, it was my first time. And after I checked in the, the hotel, I noticed that uh, my room didn't have a toilet paper in the bathroom, uh, but I couldn't tell that uh, situation to the front desk. I don't want to say what I did, but uh, it was a tough time. Uh, eventually, my, my friend translated and told that, but I spent two days uh, without having a toilet paper. Yeah, that was crazy. So my first travel to London, I didn't speak English at all. I think I just said, uh, I just said thank you or uh, yes, only that. My friend helped me quite a lot, uh, but if I was alone in there, I bet I couldn't do anything. Yeah, this is in 2015. So the first travel to London was very nice, but uh, I was very frustrated that I couldn't speak English. So I decided to learn English. Uh, it was summer in 2015, but, uh, but uh, when I started learning English was in 2017, uh, because I was too busy to study English. I thought that uh, the first thing that I need to do was to work hard. Um, I think my personality uh, is that I tend to focus on one thing too much. <clears throat> so in this part, 
I'd like to talk about how I learned English from zero. I think if you attend this event and can understand what I'm saying, uh, I think your re English level would be very nice. At least uh, you have highest listening skills compared to me in 2015. So to come to the point, I've been learning English uh, for 4,748 hours since 2017. I have been logging all of my studying time on the Google spreadsheet to manage and track. So the average is uh, three or four hours per day. <clears throat> this is the first goal that I set in 2017. The KPI was uh, studying time and it was 1,500 hours a year. Then if I could enter running English, I decided to keep running, but if not, I could give it up. In my case, uh, when I started running English, I didn't have a strong goal. Um, you know, people said, and I also understand uh, having a concrete goal would be helpful, but I think uh, setting a suitable or good goal is hard for beginners. So I focused on the process instead of goal. And I didn't have an uh, interest in TOEIC or TOEFL or maybe IELTS score. I think it depends, but uh, at least for me, I have never taken those kind of tests. And I'm not in an uh, environment that requires those kind of tests so far. <clears throat> and uh, 1,500 1, hours came from my previous research. Before studying English, I read over 300 books in 2016. It was an experiment of how much time I can use and how I can make it a habit. Uh, from that experience, I said the goal is 1,500 hours for the first year. And there are some reasons that I set the time as a KPI. One is uh, measurable every day. Every time you fill out the studying time, you have to look at the spreadsheet. It reminds me to study and it is helpful to make it habit. And the second reason is repeatability. If someone wants to start running English, I can tell them how much time it takes. Like this event, so in my case, uh, when I joined or current company, or Turtles, in 2018, the total studying time was uh, almost 2,000 hours. Also, one of my friends used this time managing way, and he was accepted to uh, design school abroad. The third one is uh, whether I can enjoy learning English or not. I think the reason why I couldn't speak English was that I didn't like English subject at school. If I like English, I would have spoken more, but it does not. And I thought it takes a long time for learning English. So I, I prioritized enjoying way uh, more than efficiency. And I think uh, it would work in the current situation uh, that we cannot go abroad. Visiting abroad is, gives you good motivation, uh, but we have to study in Japan and it is quite hard to keep motivation. So please enjoy running and keep it. This is the total time that I study English. It depends on the year, but uh, mainly focused on speaking and listening because I wanted to talk with my girlfriend in the Philippines. I think you don't need to follow this. Uh, I suggest you to try several types of way and figure out what is your enjoyable or stressful way of learning English for a long time. And I am going to introduce a few methods 
that I tried and good for me. When you're studying abroad, um, also it might be hard for a while. This is uh, an English school I was in, Cebu. The cost was reasonable compared to other countries. I went to that school in just for a week in June 2017. It was actually uh, it was just a research, uh, but it was a super nice environment. Uh, like the teachers are very friendly. The uh, alcohol was very cheap. There was a pool in the school, and the students were only Japanese. So I thought it was good for beginners. Then I came back to the school in August and studied for two months. The next one is watching YouTube or Netflix. It has uh, subtitles and you can watch while doing something uh, like uh, relax time and drinking or eating or committing to the company. Actually, I have uh, never watched the Japanese channel in 2017 and 18. All videos that I watched were English content. And I recommend you to watch dramas um, because it has many series, uh, which means the word used in the drama tend to be the same. It would be hard for the first series, but uh, you'd be able to understand little by little. And I listened to a podcast all the time when I was working and doing a housework or taking a shower. I know we are busy, but uh, we can listen to podcasts every time. And the other one is uh, reading comics in English. So as a Japanese, uh, we are very familiar with manga. So the major titles are also famous in abroad. So I, I suggest uh, reading the comics in English once you've read in Japanese. So you can enjoy it uh, because you've already understood the story and some English speaker loves manga. So sometimes the characters' names are different from Japanese, but it would be a good topic when you talk with them. And I also introduce other ways in my note. In this note, uh, you can also download my spreadsheet. I hope it is going to be helpful for you. So please enjoy learning English. I think learning for fun is the most efficient way to learn English. And it's good for a long time. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Tomo. It was really interesting. Thank you. I'm personally interested in how did you survive in London without toilet paper for two days? Uh, I cannot say in this event, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next is Tak. Hi. Yeah. All right, let me start. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, this is Takono. I'm a business person, uh, different from the previous uh, speakers, uh, creative people. But, uh, but I have a huge respect towards uh, the creatives and the creative people. And then I am uh, a bit uh, different from uh, the ordinary, probably Japanese uh, salaryman type of people as well. Um, then you know this subject of uh, you know, how might we work? Uh, actually, you know how I studied English and how I uh, you know learned to speak and deal with uh, foreign people. Actually, turned uh, you know my life to be a little bit of a twist. And at the same time, I it actually helped me to you know, pursue my you know real dream to become myself. So let me explain, uh, you know, what I have been doing and what I have done. And I think it's a rather unconventional story, but uh, hopefully everyone will uh, enjoy. So uh, just a little bit of background. I, I was born in Oita, Kyushu, and then raised in Nagoya. And then, you know, since university, 
I moved to Tokyo, and since then I've been living mostly in, in my time in Tokyo. But uh, when I was in college, university, after you know spending three years, I decided to go to abroad. And the first place I went to was Canada, Montreal. Then uh, after that, uh, after working several years, I also took some uh, you know years off to study uh, more and then spend time in Europe. Uh, this time was Italy, Milan. Then uh, you know pretty much my career has been uh, in back and forth with you know uh, you know com some communication and touch and some uh, you know as aspects of uh, global business, uh, but uh, most particularly in late. Uh, latest uh, time, like three years ago, since three years ago, I spent most of the time in US, uh, Los Angeles, and also Germany in Berlin. So uh, let's move on to the next page. Yeah, this is a beautiful picture of Montreal. I I really really love Montreal. Uh, it was a uh, you know first experience for me actually to you know uh, fly overseas flight. I never actually been to any other places outside Japan, and then at the time, you know, like everyone, uh, the previous speakers, I couldn't speak any, uh, I would say, a very little, little of English. And then, uh, you know, actually, uh, I remember, I still remember the first day of uh, the time and the night arrived in Montreal. I it was uh, the most probably the you know uh, odd and uh, probably. A uh, unique uh, day of my life because I had a full of uh, excitement and a full of anxiety at the same time. It's two both excitement and anxiety, anxiety banging in my in my in my head, and then uh, you know I really couldn't speak on the first night. Um, move on to the next page. Then I remember uh, it was like three days after I arrived in Montreal. And uh, I was hungry. Uh, it was lunchtime and I couldn't really find a place to eat. And then there was some place called the Burger King. Um, let me explain, uh, it was back in 95. So uh, the Burger King wasn't in Japan. So I didn't know this chain store. I only knew that another one, the, Mar the, the McDonald's. But you know, I couldn't find anything else, so I just jumped in, jumped into Burger King, and then I was, uh, you know, like, like you know, maybe some of you might imagine, uh, I was queuing uh, towards the cashier of the lady, and I was, you know, waiting and then, you know, uh, preparing myself, you know, how to order the burger, and then I was, I was expecting like there's, there must be something like a Burger King uh, should be have a Big Mac or something. Or, so maybe I was saying like a, there's gonna be a Big King or something, or you know, there, there must be something like a, I don't know the, the pure hamburger should be there. And I was uh, you know uh, should I say can I have or uh, uh, will you please, or you know, like I was expecting, uh, trying to convert uh, the Japanese into English, and then here comes my comes my term, and I was kind of you know paused, couldn't really order the Burger King anything, and um, because as you know, you know from from you know, somebody who knows about the Burger King, the burger is called as a Whopper, and Whopper is is written in very, very strange alphabet, W-H-L-T-P-E-R. And then, you know, as a English uh, you know, uh, beginner, I first I couldn't know, I didn't know how to read it, and I didn't know how to pronounce it. So I was just, you know, stopped and paralyzed and I couldn't order anything. And then finally the, the cashier said the uh, simple word, next. So I was, I was uh, kicked out from the Burger King and I couldn't eat anything. So that was the uh, first day uh, of uh, my time. But uh, you know, luckily enough, I met a lot of uh, friends and then you know, I met a lot of uh, uh, good teachers and then uh, spent one year uh, in Canada and then you know, simply you know, going to English school and then became uh, you know, pretty much you know, uh, comfortable speaking English after one year. 
then uh, let me explain uh, what actually could uh, actually you know that experience of spending one year uh, learning English changed myself. Uh, next page. So, so this is like from A to B. Uh, before, you know, flying over to Canada, I think I was a typical Japanese uh, college student. Uh, I was uh, pretty much obsessed to think in a way like, you know, after I graduate, I should, I must go to a big Japanese company and I must, uh, you know, go to uh, Shinso Tsusayo process. I must wear, you know, neckties and uh, ties and suits, and then I must, 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 so, those things. And then I was thinking like a risk is more of a danger. So I was thinking about uh, try to avoid the risky choices. Like, you know, uh, I didn't want to go to a company or I didn't want to work for a company which has a lot of risks. And also, you know, when I think about my career, I thought that it's got to be like a one way road, you know, like a, finding a good company and, you know, stick to it and then, you know, uh, work uh, towards retirement. And that was a particular way of thinking at the time. And then, you know, from that notion uh, actually led me to think that, oh my God, you know, I want to, I wish I could be like a college student forever. You know, I don't want to work and I want to go to, you know, like a, a packed train and then, you know, commute every day. And it's, I felt like uh, working is going to be sacrificed. So that was my vision at the time. And then, you know, after spending one year in Canada, I met a lot of, uh, you know, interesting people, not only students, but also uh, business people. Uh, some Somebody, you know, who uh, was working in Canada. And then actually, you know, a lot of uh, cultural things and the work ethics, um, you know, many, many things actually interfered to my way of processing and my, my way of looking at the world, uh, my way of uh, thinking about how the world is constructed. So I changed to see the world is more of a can do. I can do this. I can probably do this. I can. I can be that, I can be him, I can be like 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 this person. So that was the way of changing, changing, changing of my you know, way of thinking. And then I felt like a risk is never be a danger. Risk is more chance. And you know, there's gonna be upside. Uh, if you take a risk, there'll be reward. And that's the different way of thinking. And then I started to see as a word, uh, maybe the career of the, you know, as a, as a, as a person who work uh, as a spiral stair, more like a Lassen Kaidan spiral, uh, rather than just one way road. You can make some mistake maybe, and then you can reset, you can do something else. So that's another way of looking at the world. And then, you know, uh, in the end, I felt like, uh, okay, so, you know, the work uh, is going to be uh, interesting. I, I am looking forward to work and I'm looking forward to do adventure. So that's, that's actually the turn uh, my key to be, oh, I can't finish graduating. And I, I really want to start working from, from tomorrow. So that's, that's how I changed. But I think, you know, uh, it, was a, it was a good thing. But at the same time, you know, maybe in my case, I was a little, little bit of uh, uh, extreme. And then, uh, let me explain. Uh, you know, share with uh, with you about all of you about uh, my strange career path after that. Next page. So, it, you know, some people, or maybe very often the case, uh, when I was asked to introduce myself and my career. I tend to, you know, ask, like, you know, do you want to have a short version of myself or do you want a long version? And this is a long version, and I'm not going to go over everything. But uh, uh, you know, uh, as you can see, there are ten company names, and then I can, I can, you know, uh, I'm, hap I'm 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 a little bit of, you know, uh, hesitant to say that, but these ten companies are not a project. It's a uh, it's a full-time work. So I actually had a 10 Meishi name cards and I actually belong to the 10 corporations. Probably it's a, it's a bit of a, 
uh, you know, extreme case, <laughs> but uh, you know, I worked for those companies, and then the numbers on, before the company names are uh, basically the trajectory of my career. So I hopped into the four dimensions, happened to be the four dimensions. I wasn't designed uh, from the beginning, but uh, you know, if I look back, I can summarize in four, four hemispheres. Then I, you know, I changed my job you know, from one to two and two to three, three to four, top, 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 top. So, so a lot of people may call me as a, a job hopper, and job hopping is not a good, good thing. But, uh, but actually, it's and I feel like this is not a job hopping, but it's more like a, the result of, uh, you know, uh, trying to find the truth myself and try to, you know, optimize my life and try to enjoy my life. And then, you know, those way of thinking actually came from that time that I was in Montreal. And, you know, what I can probably, you know, tell to the audience here, here is, uh, is that, uh, you know, right, so don't uh, mimic my career. It's a little bit too much, but, uh, but, you know, if you learn English, if you start to uh, realize, you know, how, you know, how exciting the world would be after, you know, speaking English, becoming able to speak English, you will be able to, uh, you know, maximize your uh, you know, curiosity and then probably uh, take a risk a little bit more than the other Japanese people. And then probably uh, you will be able to have a fulfilled uh, professional career, hopefully. Then as a, as a little bit of a sign to, you know, probably hopefully to motivate the audience here, uh, next page. The benefit of uh, working in uh, different countries and working in uh, different companies, and then you know having a lot of uh, network, building up a lot of uh, you know, careers uh, in your in your in your you know, trajectory in your resume, uh, may sometimes lead to meet with uh, very interesting people. Um, like you know uh, the left side up uh, is Leonardo DiCaprio and Maizawa-san uh, from Zozo. And uh, Toby Maguire from he's a, he's he's also the actor from uh, Spider-Man. And the right side is a Spanish uh, footballer uh, who's uh, like a, you know, somebody who knows about the soccer. Uh, he is David Villa. Uh, I'm I happened to uh, meet him and I became a business partner with him. Uh, it's all because I you know became uh, international. I became uh, speak, able to speak English. And then in the below two photos are from my uh, my teammates. Uh, the left bottom is from Berlin, and the right is from Los Angeles. And then you know they are not uh, famous people like uh, those up, but uh, you know uh, many many uh, people from abroad, uh, different countries, and then different perspectives. And then you know most of the cases, the best memory is not only the work but also enjoy glass of wines and you know speaking about uh, you know stupid things and you know those party party times and you became a true friend from everyone uh, from the world all, all over the world and that's I think is the reward of uh, speaking English the next page I uh, brought a couple of pa couple of uh, example um, of uh, the company I used to work for and also work with. Um, then, you know, I, I, I like I said before, uh, myself is not a creator, but I had a chance to, I had a privilege to work with a lot of uh, the great creative people, creative minds and creative firms. One of them I worked with is called TBWA. Uh, it's one of the prominent uh, I'd say uh, design firm from the U.S. and the uh, representative works and you know some of the track record of them are ranging uh, from uh, many many different uh, you know great companies like Airbnb, uh, Nissan, and then uh, Apple. Um, they are particularly very uh, famous for the work that they did for Steve Jobs in Apple in, in you know back in, since from. Uh, late 80s so it's a big uh, design company uh, lots of uh, creative people working uh, in los angeles in this uh, this case and then uh, you know this picture shows 
how you know how it looks like uh, if you as a designer or a creative person start to learn English and speak English and be able to work in global landscape uh, you know simply the, the office is massive and it's a lot of space and also um, you know, it's nice uh, nicely decorated but also you know if you step in there uh, you see a lot of uh, you know, smiley faces and you see a lot of people enjoying um, you know, time uh, working in office, and there is a, certainly a notion like you know, all right. So there's a freedom, and there's a creativity, so, and there's uh, there's like you know, a lot of people walking, passing by, and say hi, and then have some chat, and then starting some you know discussions. I thought I thought it's, it, this is a, this is a way. This is gonna be the way the creative people work, and then you know, there's no hierarchy. Um, but stronger accountability, stronger uh, professionalism is over there. So I felt like uh, this is a the great example of, uh, you know, a person who pursue to be, to create something, pursue to, uh, to do something for the world and do some you know, big things. Uh, you know, the office is important. Of course, in under COVID time, this is a different time, but you know, the, how it's designed to work uh, in a creative setup and also, you know, if you are Japanese living in the U.S., living in L.A., for example, and they meet with uh, the people from around the world, uh, you see always constantly get some uh, input and the different perspectives. And then yeah, those perspectives uh, basically changes your mind often and then change the way how you think. And then that will, that would, would uh, probably lead to, uh, you know, uh, write different things or draw different uh, characters or uh, you know uh, produce something different so so that's I think is one of the uh, benefit of uh, working in a global landscape and another page and this one is also from TV Bay and then this shot is uh, taken when I was uh, working for Zozo um, and then some of you know that Zozo uh, is a is an e-commerce platform of the fashion. At the same time, at, the t at that time, uh, since 2017, we were uh, uh, working, pushing ourselves hard to launch a new project, a new company, uh, basically a new business uh, of uh, the private brand of Zozo. And then uh, it was a Zozo suit to measure your body and also to uh, Zozo clothing to uh, produce, uh, to suit to your body shape, uh, some you know materials like uh, t-shirts, uh, denims and those clothing. So it was basically a launch of uh, a global um, fashion brand. And then we decided to partner with this company, TBWA, and then it was like a million dollar project. Um, and then, you know, like you, you see from here, more than 20 people were working at the same time and then the TBWA people are uh, I can't I don't know the numbers but you know, uh, even uh, more than 20 people uh, all together were working in a different uh, project simultaneously then I have a question like uh, you know uh, to the audience here I know you know people want to answer but uh, uh, so uh, this is a kind of eye-opening uh, thing for me, so that's why I wanted to question to you. How many of them do you think are employees of TBWA? Let's say full-time employees of TBWA. Uh, let's say there's, I, I don't count, but roughly 20 people. How many percentage of them are from full-time TBWA? The answer is actually nobody knows the percentage. Let me explain. I actually uh, worked with them for more than three months. And then uh, everybody, basically, you know, if you are working in the US, uh, it's rare, rare that you exchange a name card. But you know, how, you know who, who they are. And then uh, I was assuming like most of them should be uh, uh, people who work permanently for TBWA. And then I began to hear something like, uh, oh, by the way, he's, she, he's, uh, he's uh, working for the different project. Okay, uh, so everybody has a different project. Yes, I understand. And sometimes I hear, like, uh, there's, uh, she actually has to work for the different company. 
Okay, so you, the different company means different project, right? No, no, he, she is working for the different company. What do you mean? And then I was asking, like, you know, hearing, like, you know, okay, uh, all of a sudden I noticed that those people uh, working for Zozo project were not only TBW people, but also from somebody who basically has a job in a different com companies, or maybe uh, those people who may be a freelancers, those people who may be called as a so-called SOW consultants. SOW consultants is a common word for California and professionals from different firms. And then I began to you know, puzzle myself and all right, so who they are? Uh, are we working for TBW or TBW uh, group of TBW? You know, those you know, different kind of uh, perspectives actually started to uh, come to my mind. And then, you know, I asked, asked to the project managers and then some of the, some of them actually should know, but they are just saying, I, I can't tell you, I mean, this is, uh, this is normal for California, Silicon Valley. You know, you, you basically source a talent uh, according to the needs of the clients flexibly so that they don't really care about uh, where you work for and then, you know, where your paycheck is coming from. And then, you know, you just need to be professional. You just need to be as an individual to contribute. And then, you know, the you know, evaluation is basically not by your title, your uh, corporate name tag, but more about, uh, you know, what actually, what kind of outcome, output you created. And then, you know, this is, this is what, uh, what actually was basically shocked me at the time. So if you're working in the US, uh, you see a lot of uh, cases like this. You don't have to think about where do I, if you are employer, employee, sorry, uh, employee, you don't have to think about, uh, you know, whether I should be sticking to working for this company or not. But, you know, they, be, they think that professionals are professionals, and then they are almost like a baseball player or almost like a, you know football players. You may change your job uh, according to the opportunities, and then not only you change the job, but also you know in this case you sometimes um, you know work for a project which is uh, run by a different company, and then you're being called up by your friend. Oh hey, but Tak, do you have time to work for this project? Join. Would you join? Yes. Uh, so, so I think it's now that the world is really changing, shifting in this way, like you know, assembling the talents from here and there, and then if if you become a real, real professional, you'll be able to expand your horizon, expand your opportunities outside of your employer, and that's actually is is I think it's excellent and I think it's exciting thing. Um, maybe it depends on people, but yes. Um, the next one is uh, the last uh, summary of what I wanted to say for today. Um, so, uh, speaking English, uh, it's, a, it's a great thing uh, because simply it's exciting and fun. Uh, drinking with friends, um, you know, meeting different people, learning new perspectives. But uh, as a professional, uh, to build your career, uh, there's a lot of uh, opportunities outside Japan, especially if you are creative people. Um, I, I definitely encourage you to think about uh, the opportunity to work with and work for and work in outside Japan, because there is a rise of uh, independent workforce. Uh, some people may call it uh, like a gig economy or a uh, you know, freelance economy. Um, I read, uh, I found uh, some article like uh, studies estimate that by the year 2020, which is this year, 43% uh, of the American workforce will consist of independent contractors. I can't believe it from Japanese way of thinking, but 43% of people who work may be independent. And then, you know, somebody you know, uh, you meet on the, over the business, maybe actually a freelancer, maybe actually a, you know, a not a full-time individual. 
and that's actually is is completely normal in the current setup, especially in the U.S. and not only actually in the U.S. but also、uh, pretty much on the all over the world. So I think you know、uh, maybe maybe、uh, there must be a different type of perspectives、uh, among the audiences. There may be some people who are you know more introvert,、uh, who are risk averse,、uh, and I don't want to risk myself. I don't want to、uh, have a crazy life like myself. I want to have a more you know stabilized.、Uh, A you know, predictable career, and I think that's totally normal, and and I don't really want to, you know, deny it. But at the same time,、uh, think about you as a, as for example, the money in the bank, and if you are、uh, trying to build the wealth,、uh, some people,、uh, you know, will tell you like, you should invest. Not only just you know keeping the money on a on a bank, but also you should invest. And if you invest, it's better to invest in a different stocks or different portfolios because you know putting one egg in one basket is too risky. And that's what often、uh, you know people get advised when you try to、uh, manage your you know finances. I think the career building is also the same. If you are putting yourself as a career, as a professional, into one egg,、uh, you know, what's going to happen if you have an earthquake or if you know, if you have something, you know, terrible thing happen in your career? Why don't you, you know, spend your time in a little bit over here, a little bit over there?、Uh, maybe, you know,、uh, you know, you work with a different type of people from different companies, and then you can grow. And that's, I think, is.、Uh, It's one way, one way of thinking. It's not the only way, but it's a, there's one way of thinking, and you can control your career and your life.、Uh, let me finish this、uh, by you know, refraining、uh, this uh, you know, uh, uh, title of this pro- program.、Uh, how might we work? The answer is actually based on how you think, and then you know the answer would be how much you want to be. Yourself, and you wanna you know, fulfill your dream. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tag. That was very interesting stories, especially about the the way of working in US. It's crazy that like forty three percent of the population work as a freelance now. Well, I mean, there's a I mean a lot of different way of calculation, but、uh, I think it's a bit of.、Uh, Big number, but、uh, but I believe so. Okay, that that's、yeah. that's quite interesting. It's very different from Japan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Yep. So now we are going to have five minute breaks, and please refill your glass and come back in five minutes. This event is brought to you by. You next. Check us up at unext.co.jp. If you are interested in this event, ask any question or opinions. Please go ahead and tweet with hashtag #HMWW. Thank you so much.
welcome back to How Might We Work. Here comes the fun part. We are going to have panel discussion time. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> question that we uh, corrected in advance from the audience today. So we are going to de answer these questions as much as possible. Let's get started. The first question is, how do you find the time to study English during busy days of working and learning design skills or professional skills? What is your method to balance work and English studies? So, how do you think Namika? Sure. Um, since I'm working in the US, I'm kind of like learning English through work, but one thing uh, what comes to mind is to learn design in English. Um, there are some books about design that lead to developing reading skill. Also, there are uh, some YouTubers who are a UX designer, graphic designer, what else, like animator, illustrator. So that is a good for listening skill. In mm. addition to them, in this COVID-19 situation, many organizations hold a virtual conference like this, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. hold a conference workshop in virtually. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there's uh, some time, uh, time zone uh, program, but I think it's a good opportunity to interact with uh, someone who speaks uh, in English. Uh, that's a good point, Jack Sherry. We can join the event, the online event that, that mm -hmm. is happening in you, for example. Mm -hmm. So how do you think, Tomo, how do you find the time to study English? Uh, okay, so um, in my case, uh, I focused on work first. Uh, Actually, I am not good at uh, doing two or more things at once. Uh, luckily, uh, I didn't have an uh, interest in English, so I could focus on the work first. Um, the, of course, uh, I learned English uh, while working. So, my schedule uh, when I studied uh, while working in a previous company, uh, it was about three hours per day on average. Like uh, my schedule, uh, I woke up at 6 a.m. in the morning and what? I had an uh, online English class for 30 minutes or uh, went mm -hmm. to a cafe to study English. Then uh, I also studied on a train. Uh, it took over 30 or 40 minutes one way. So in green return way, um, I could study for an hour. Then after coming back home, um, I think I watched uh, YouTube or Netflix while drinking and uh, eating for mm -hmm. an hour or two. Yeah, it was my daily typical routine. Yeah. And as Namika said, uh, watching a YouTube channel is really helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some famous channels on YouTube. Uh, my favorite one is uh, it's called Flex and uh, AG and Smart. Yeah, it's really mm -hmm. famous. Yeah. Uh, like, like watching TV or watching YouTube in English is actually not. You don't feel like you are studying English. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a good way. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can do it while doing something. Yeah, sure. And you can enjoy in the same right. time. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> As Tom mentioned earlier, you know, like uh, learning something in a fun way or with enjoyable things. So I think that's a good point to continue learning. So how do you think that? Yeah, I think there are a lot of uh, methodologies to you know find your time to learn English uh, especially on you know, reading and listening uh, mm -hmm. it's more up to 
probably you know how you block your time how you design your time but i guess you know most of the people would uh, struggle how to speak uh, probably how to you know mm -hmm. uh, train yourself to speak english is is gonna be a, a challenge especially in, under covid time uh, you don't meet a lot of people and you don't have a party uh, but uh, but my recommendation is you know if you really want to you know uh, be comfortable in in english uh, rather you know find a way uh, to uh, you know force yourself to speak english is mm -hmm. i think it's uh, more uh, faster and then probably the quicker way to learn english that's that's how i think and then particularly in my case uh, it was uh, italian i i i started i started to study italian when i was in uh, was working um before going to italy um, i actually try to find a friend who is Italian, who is not uh, free, uh, you know, uh, not really, uh, you know, uh, frequent in Japanese. And then we did some kind of exchange. Like I meet uh, this person sometimes like uh, you know, twice a week or once a week sometimes. And then I'll uh, spend like uh, only one hour. Uh, so let's do Italian first, 30 minutes. And then exchange, let's do in Japanese for 30 minutes. Mm. to, to you know, force yourself to speak a new language and that's I think is uh, is a key and then by doing this uh, it's like a you know, back and forth uh, you go back and study something and listen music or you know, watch, watch TV to get more uh, download into your brain and then also you need to do a, a maybe output uh, to by speaking mm. um, yeah, yeah. the language I think it's a really good way to learn English quickly, I think. Yeah. I use some apps that for like a learning extent. Oh, yeah. Like the apps uh, that you can find a um, person uh, who is uh, interested in your language. Like uh, there are some people who are interested in Japanese. So that's a good thing to have a conversation with them. Yeah, language exchange app. Uh, the famous one is uh, called uh, Tandem. Yeah, uh, I, I use it. Hello Talk. Yeah. Use, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Hmm. Okay, so let's go to the next question. What are the essential skills to work globally? Have you had a difficult time or experience working in an international environment? Tomo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, I can say communication, uh, but also need uh, work skills. So, mm. In my case, uh, there are so many designers who can speak English. And uh, I think they understand the uh, different cultures and sometimes they are hiring quotes uh, cheaper than Japanese. So when thinking about uh, competing with them, uh, we have to have language, I mean communication skills as a base, um, but also require unique design skills or something a strong point that they want to hire. So mm. I think uh, that is an uh, essential thing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. When you speak English, you find that that speaking English is not special outside of Japan. Yeah, yeah. 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 totally. <laughs> yeah. It's really good design skills to get a job as a designer outside of Japan. Right. Yeah. So, uh, Tak, have you had uh, any difficult time or experience? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I okay, this may be a little bit of a, a different perspective, but uh, from my experience working globally and to, to be, you know, able to perform in a global setup, uh, in the end, what I learned, uh, what I thought that I, that's most essential is not language skill, but the mm -hmm. physical fitness. And oh. this may be this may be a little a little bit of a, need a little bit of explanation. Um, 
So imagine yourself uh, going to the party uh, with the global colleagues, and then you know they don't sit down, and they just often you know bring the, the drink, and then you know standing and chatting like you know, two hours, and they don't really sit down. And then you know uh, sometimes uh, when you work, uh, there's a time difference, and you need to wake up like very early in the morning to speak with uh, you know Sanzios from California and then work for a Japanese company and then you know you start to uh, have a conversation with uh, European colleagues in the night and ended up working like long long hours and you may sacrifice your time of sleeping uh, when you work globally because you know, when you are uh, Japanese you often the case if you find a job uh, you are expected to connect with uh, with a Japanese or somebody who's uh, uh, who's, who the company was working between Japan and somewhere. So mm -hmm. which end up with most of the cases dealing with uh, time differences. And you need to have a strong physical fitness to do this. Right. But it's fun. That's it's really fun, but you know, <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> That's a really good point. You, you have quite often jet lag as well when you travel across the world. Yeah, but you know, with this you know COVID situation, it gets uh, less and less uh, commute and travel needed, uh, which is uh, better than before. But, mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So, Namika, have you had a difficult mm -hmm. time working in a US company? Yeah, um, I was thinking uh, what global means because I just. I just know two local areas like uh, Japan and the US. I'm not familiar with other areas like Europe. However, in the company that I'm working for have diverse people who have different backgrounds, uh, nations, languages, and so on. So what I can say about it from that point uh, view uh, is to understand uh, and be tolerant of a different culture and respect each other. Everyone has a different way to uh, accept us and learn from them. So uh, I guess before understanding that, maybe um, how do I, say, I was a uh, struggle to know that or, you know, I guess the first few weeks or months is it's it's a bit uh, hard time to you know find uh, or understand that different cultures yeah oh one thing I uh, remember is like I I used to do often uh, say like uh, I'm sorry I'm sorry but uh, uh, my worker said oh you don't need to say sorry yeah, then I I learned oh I should say like a thank you instead of I'm sorry so that's uh, like you know different culture from Japan I think yeah I see yeah I agree and uh, don't you think that they uh, have the opinion very straightforward like Japanese don't say our opinion very clearly but they say mm -hmm. what they want and the first time I was working in the Australian company, it was very hard for me to explain myself. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this kind of thing could be a uh, different, difficult time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Japanese language often drops like a subject. Mm -hmm. You know? Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, what will be the first step to work as a designer abroad? Oh, mm. <laughs> it's a designer job, but uh, can you, do you have any idea, Namika? Yeah, uh, actually, I may not the like person to answer that because most important things to work in a foreign country is visa. 
So since my husband had lived in the U.S. before I moved, and I got a spouse visa, so my experience experience won't be much help. But assuming that you get a visa, or you may、uh, you might be able to work for a foreign company, or you know you may you might be get an opportunity like a, as a freelance, you know, like working with with a foreign. Uh, company,、mm. so I would recommend starting by making a portfolio that express、uh, who you are and what you did, and then make sure what was a decision you made in your project. So it's kind of like a name card、uh, over designers. Yeah, I can see that. The form mode you made a portfolio for the first step. Ah,、uh, actually, I've never、uh, had my portfolio website. Okay.、Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um. Get this job. <laughs> yeah, but I had a、uh, account on Jibo, which、uh, Namika introduced on her slide. Uh, so Dribo is、uh, it's kind of like a worldwide designer community. So <clears throat> the recently the trend on Dribo is、uh, visual design, and actually I feel too much. But、uh, it is、uh, also a good way to approach other designers and companies. And there is a I think there is a job search function, and、uh, you can also get job offers if you post. Good works, and、uh, I can say、uh, it's not only for designers but also other jobs.、Uh, I suggest、uh, you make a LinkedIn account first. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> especially <laughs> in the US. Yeah, <laughs> right. Must have. Yeah, I just noticed that I got the offer、uh, thirty minutes ago from LinkedIn. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty long. Yeah. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, it's really famous for in a、uh, other country, right, Taku? Yes. Yeah,、uh, you, you. I mean, it's more than name card. You need to have the link. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. The、exactly. first step, first step is to make LinkedIn account. Yeah. We all. all... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. The next. Question.、Oh, what was your second desire for your career after having confidence to communicate in English? Hack. <laughs> desire.、Uh, like I said, I I began to study a different language after English because、oh. you know, learning a new language actually was so much fun. And then、mm-hmm. after being able to speak English, I. Decided to learn an Italian, which actually was、uh, you know, only a halfway.、Um, then you know, still I'm、uh, trying to find the time to study. But、uh, you know,、um, maybe that's you know the language is so so eye-opening for myself, and then helped me develop myself. So I wanted to do one more again, and then、uh, I found Italian in my case. Okay, nice. So is Italian much more difficult than English? You think? Actually, actually easier <laughs> because、oh. yeah, the, the pronunciation is so similar for Japanese.、Mm. Um, okay, okay. Even even now, you know, when I speak English, I need to you know to you know pull more energy.、Uh, you know, when I speak English, you know, I need to you know use more the tongues and the muscle of the faces.、Mm-hmm. And I need to change my character completely. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it, but Italian, you know, I feel like I can just you know reading a、uh, katakana, and、uh, it's just so easy.、Uh, oh, speaking、okay. speaking Italian, speaking listening, it's it's super easy. Interesting. Yeah, Interesting. but、uh, you know, always the、uh, pronunciations and、uh, you know the challenge for you know people who learn English. So、um, yes,、uh, English is a hard language for Japanese.、Mm, that's quite interesting to know about that. But one one more thing, you know, once you learn one, you know, second language,、uh, the third lang- learning third language is a lot easier. 
because you can guess and <laughs> you can create uh, some you know convert something from english to italian and sometimes it's uh, it's right so much much faster Yes, especially Latin based languages that are very similar to English, right? Spanish. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Actually, uh, when I was in Berlin, I tried to learn Germany, German. Oh, yeah, forget about it. <laughs> uh, it was too long and it's too difficult for me. Yeah, mm -hmm. actually, I give up. I think the pronunciation is really hard. Yeah. And the words are too long. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, like, do you find the different characteristic German, American, different countries? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Mm. Now, which country do you think is the most like, uh, like good fit with Japanese people? Uh, I would say Americans. Okay. Uh, because, um, there are so many uh, people from uh, from other countries, so they could understand different culture and uh, way of speaking. Yeah, I think uh, they are totally different from uh, Japanese. They are they have really uh, open mind. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm just talking something <laughs> very different from the question. So. <laughs> Namika, how do you think about this? Uh, mm -hmm. but, yeah. yeah. Um, I'd like to create a product that delivers to the world. Then to to do that, uh, uh, personally, uh, I'd like to improve my facilitation uh, ability, or you know, like a uh, ability to lead a project or something. So. Mm. It, it may also still be related to English, but <laughs> you know, more like a communication, advanced communication skills. Yeah, that's right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Let's go to the next Do you find differences in work environment between Japan and San Francisco? What do you like and don't like about it? I think this question is Amika. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, um, I think um, uh, there are some differences. Uh, I think one of the differences between Japan and the US is the interview process. Uh, mm -hmm. For um, instance, even if you are referred to a company by a friend of yours, you have to take a phone screening. And the process is long, you know, many steps for the for your presentation, design exercise. Uh, so it's hard to get a job, but once you get a job, I think you would likely meet talented people because of the process. On the other side, in Japan, there are many opportunities to get a job, even if you have less experience. And I love the concept of senpai kohai that doesn't exist in, in English. Uh, the <laughs> relationship of uh, it is a kind of like a mentorship. I think that that's a good thing to grow for designers. So I love uh, that concept. Mm, okay, so in a, a hiring process, you have like a design exercise. You actually need to design something in front of the uh, in front of the people who uh, have. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. There are two types. One is a called uh, whiteboard challenge. So it's you you have to deliver something in front of a person. It takes. Uh, 20 minutes or 40 minutes, uh, you okay. know, uh, you've got uh, like a, an assignment uh, and then, what do you say, you know, you do like a, a wireframe sketching or define uh, the project uh, summary 
and then you know you how do you say it? you um, suggest um mm -hmm. product so and then the other type is an assignment you know it takes one week or something you know you got mm -hmm. an assignment task and then what i did was um i did a uh, user research and then i i did like a information architecture and then i made a prototype and then i present uh presented uh in front of uh in person uh so yeah there are two types Wow, that's quite different from Japanese way of hiring. I never heard that designer yeah. uh, exercise in front of them. <laughs> and I just be, I believe that it's very tough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was tough. It's yeah, too yeah, long yeah. process. Yeah. Mm. And do you have like a, you you like about working in US company? Something you don't like about? Hmm, it's tough. But uh, oh yeah, one one thing um, I love in San Francisco is the value of design is acknowledged more than Japan, in my opinion. There are many designer founders like uh, Airbnb, Instagram, Etsy, Figma. So that culture influence in the Bay Area. And then mm. designers make a decision about the product. That's a, uh, that's a thing I love. And then as an example of the value, my salary is about uh, two times more than what I got in Japan. So yeah, that's one thing I love about San Francisco. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> so, yeah, but, uh, hmm. oh, sorry. I, oh, I, I, I can echo what, uh, you know, she just, she said, uh, especially in the US, uh, mm -hmm. the management, the leaders appreciate the power of uh, design, power of uh, creativity is mm -hmm. more than Japanese people in, in general term. So uh, I think you know, uh, the environment, uh, working environment and you know how people appreciate uh, the creative mindset and skill sets are enormous in outside mm -hmm. Japan, particularly in the US and California. And, you know, that's, that's how I feel. Mm, that's really nice about it. Yeah. yeah like, you know, in Japan, unfortunately, designing job is not that high salary job. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. I hope Japan will be the same than US. <laughs> yeah, it's getting higher and higher, but uh, still lower than engineers, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's no no major difference between engineers and the designers or you know the UI UX designers. Mm -hmm. It's all the, all in the, in the same category in the US, mm -hmm. pretty much. Yeah, that's great that we have it. Yeah, in Japan, uh, if you want to have a higher salary, uh, you have to be uh, something like a managing position in Japan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but in the US, uh, there are some uh, mm, there are some designers uh, who are continue uh, working on just a design work for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So Tak, I think you have worked in very uh, many different places. How do you think about the work environment in Japan and the different countries? Yeah, well, I mean, the lot, lots of lots of difference mm -hmm. in the working environment, and and I would say Japan is uh, particularly unique if you see from outside of the world. So mm -hmm. we should be, you know, uh, we should be aware that uh, the working as a Japanese in Japanese corporation is completely 
uh, opposite pretty much from uh, what's going on in outside Japan. And then if you go outside Japan, I mean, forget about North Korea or some other places, but you know, most of the you know, Western co- countries are pretty much like in a, in, working in the same system. Um, and then, and then uh, the biggest difference actually comes from the concept of uh, lifetime employment or uh, long-time employment. And then, you know, the most of the people, like, you know, we as a Japanese think that the long-term commitment and long-term employment is a great thing. But I feel it's opposite because in the U.S. you have a layoff and you can lay off people. Uh, in, of course, you know, uh, you need, and that's, that's, the, that's the situation. So people in Japan say, uh, uh, but I think it's totally opposite uh, because uh, in, in the U.S. particularly, uh, there's uh, legal litigations which costs a lot for the corporations. In order to avoid the legal disputes, uh, the companies have to define the job description clearly, and, and the company has to very often communicate with the employees about what they expect. And then, if mm-hmm. the if the employees are not doing good. Uh, they have to, you know, give a feedback and a positive feedback a lot. And uh, so, mm-hmm. so if I compare against Japan and US, uh, the managers do their job a lot more in the overseas market than Japan. And whereas in Japan, because you know they expect that you stick to the corporations, they don't sometimes give a positive, you know, the feedback of the of, of your work, and then they may be sometimes uh, not interested in your growth, personal growth as a career. Uh, so mm. so I think you know the long term employment in Japan uh, has many good things, but I feel uh, there's a lot of down things and uh, the bad things uh, for economy. Mm. That's my opinion. I, I read the uh, art, note article that you wrote about uh, the way of working in Japan and different countries. It was really interesting for me. And like Italian people work half time than Japanese and they have the same results than Japanese. Yeah, I mean, uh, so so my point is like, you know, I'm not saying like Japanese is uh, inferior or Japanese are stupid, uh, but uh, Japanese are working in a different system. And then working in Italian system or Germany system, you know, in the summertime, you know, everybody is gone. And then one month off. <laughs> And then not only summer, but every day you have to go back uh, to your family, uh, even in the U.S. as well, uh, 5 p.m., 6 p.m. Uh, but you have to, you have to, uh, you, you are aiming for a higher position in the corporations and you are aiming for a better salary. And then what they do is, uh, you know, basically despite that short term, short time of working, uh, they have to produce the results so that uh, mm-hmm. every meeting is more serious and uh, every meeting mm-hmm. uh, you have to you have to create something and you have to finish something and then there's no time to maybe okay let's have another meeting i don't make a decision and let's let's do it again 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 and that's what's uh, what's most of the cases happening in, in japanese environment and which never happens in outside and in italian they don't do it <laughs> they don't want to, you know, spend too many hours in meetings. And they make a decision, uh, even though yeah. only twenty percent of information is there, and then they go out and then drink. That's that's how they work. <laughs> yeah, the life balance is nicer than a foreign country than Japan, I guess. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. I think it's going to be the last question next. Let's go. Which environment do you think you can find more valuable information about design, a Japanese or English speaking one? Do you feel a gap between Japan and the foreign countries regarding design skills? So, Tomo, how do you think about it? Mm, that's interesting. Uh, actually, I don't think uh, there's a big gap. Um, between Japan and foreign country uh, regarding uh, user interface design. I think you can find any uh, good uh, sources in Japan. Uh, 
Of course, there are many English contents more than Japan, but I think、uh, there are too many. I mean,、uh, there are poor content and good contents. Yeah, sometimes it is hard to find a good source. So,、uh, actually, uh, usually、uh, I am just checking the link our designers posted on the Slack. Yeah, it is reliable. <laughs> <laughs> But it totally depends on what you want. Yeah. In certain areas of research, there may be more, maybe more sources in abroad. Like, for example,、uh, UX design and、uh, service design or social design, that kind of field.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's my opinion.、Mm, yeah, I guess your experience, like a researching field, is, I think it's more advanced in.、Uh, US or English speaking countries. Yeah.、Mm, Namika, how do you think about this? Yeah,、uh, I, agree, I agree with Thomas.、Uh, in my opinion, they both have useful information, so there's no gaps.、Uh, however,、mm-hmm. simply their resources in, in English much more than Japanese, so as、uh, Thomas、mm-hmm. said. But yeah, that's an interesting that、uh, Tomo said. You know, it's hard to find、uh, good resources <laughs> in, in English. <laughs> so yeah, that's a good point. But、uh, yeah, but yeah, I, I don't think、uh, there's a gap. Okay. Well, how do you think、like, your. You find that the difference between Japan and different countries about designing creative fields?、Um, I don't, I'm not the designer myself, so I don't know how much the difference is in terms of the availability of the information, but I can tell that、uh, the designers from Japan, Japan uh, in general uh, are very, very、um, respected、uh, from outside Japan. And in、mm-hmm. areas like、uh, you know, graphic designs and、uh, you know, UI UX design,、uh, I mean, although the context and the, the way、uh, maybe the, you know, the, the, the expression, the way of expression is, must be different、uh, between Japan and outside Japan, and especially the UI UX is very different. But、uh, you know, the, they actually respect、uh, Japanese creators.、Uh, Because of the love towards、uh, manga, anime,、uh, they know they you know, almost instantly assume that you are a great creator because you are Japanese. <laughs> I think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, Namika, when you're like, looking for some information about design, do you often in Japanese or more likely in English?、Uh, in English. Since I'm working in the US and then I design in English, so what I need is more、uh, in English. So,、okay. so currently、yeah. I'm interested in UX lighting. So, and then、uh, there are less information about the UX lighting in Japanese. Yeah, so, yeah. I was interested in. Actually, your company has like a specialist to the UX writing. Yeah. So, what's so, the about your、ah, Sorry, could you say that again?、Oh. Ah, sorry, what is your category? UX, UX writer?、Mm-hmm. So、what、uh, does it look like? Sorry, you your sound、me? is choppy. Uh, hello. Okay, now I can hear you.、Oh, okay, okay, great. Well, I, I'm interested in UX writer. Writing.、Mm-hmm. This is what do you say? Yeah, yeah. UX writing? What is this job? I never had it in Japan, so I, I'm very interested. Yeah,、uh, UX writing. Is about lighting,、uh, specializing in like a UX、uh, design or software design, you know,、uh, like a 
Laravel or like a GTA or something like that. So anything oh. about lighting in a context of software design. Uh, okay, I think that will be very interesting though, because yeah, when the product is getting huge, it's going to, it's kind of hard to like uh, keep every word <laughs> same. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm, that's interesting. I would probably research a bit more about this. So. Yeah, in my opinion, uh, the ten years ago, uh, for example. Uh, when thinking about app, um, it is the device is really small and uh, the design is pretty simple. But now the the apps and the web services are getting uh, bigger. I mean, uh, they have a lot of contents, which means uh, yes. it's kind of like a complex for users. So the needs of UX writing uh, is mm. getting more important these days. I think. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's right. That's a good point. How did you learn business English? Did you learn it by yourself or through daily works? Ta tag. Yeah. So, you know, in my case, actually, I learned English when I was a student. Was when I was a student, so I didn't learn. English when I was working, uh, but uh, okay. but once again, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's it's different because you know if you if you are working, uh, you have to find the time and balance, and then you're definitely are working in Japan and you are working in a Japanese OS, and it's difficult to switch the OS. Uh, I know that's that's going to be really time uh, energy consuming as well. Um, so, so my my once again my my recommendation is to to have a FaceTime uh, with uh, uh, people from the English native countries, and then switch mm. your OS installed into English OS. Mm. Right, right, right. And actually, we say business English, but uh, it's not like a Japanese Kago, right? Business English. Even if it's mm -hmm. business English, we can still be casual. We can talk more. Yeah. Like... Right. I mean, I mean, unlearning is uh, one of the difficult things that when you start English, and then naturally people uh, try to convert from the way you think and you try to say in Japanese and then translate into mm -hmm. English and then that's actually creates a lot of strange situations when you speak in English. <laughs> so, uh, so my my recommendation is to create a new identity like mm -hmm. uh, you know making a new name is, is good like a Heidi sign is great I mean so call yourself as a Heidi or call yourself as a you know, uh, Tom or, you know, I mean, putting English name and then be used to be called in English name uh, sometimes help to change your mode. Like, okay, so I'm not uh, Tomo Nantoka, but I'm Tom. And then, you know, maybe <laughs> it's actually, is gonna be a tri trigger uh, to start uh, operating in a Tom's mind, but not, not Tom or whatever, right? And that's, I think, is is a way to, way to really tackle the you know the English so it's not just the language but more about uh, identity switch mm, that's really interesting point like the Chinese people or uh, people from Asia they normally have like English name and uh, yeah. yeah we don't right. just remember. why not uh, yeah <laughs> I was I was laughing about that I and mean, when I when I met with the Hong Kong people they all have English names and I was laughing like are you are you Adrian come on you know like you have an <laughs> Asian face and Adrian uh, but you know uh, now I feel like this is a this is a good idea um, mm, okay oh, it yeah, makes that's, sense. Yeah, that's good. right so Tomo how did you learn business English uh sorry actually uh i i don't quite understand business english because um <laughs> it depends on the company but uh in my case uh 
I am communicating with only my coworkers, so uh, I think I think it's mm. pretty casual. So <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm speaking. Yeah, mm. <laughs> I I also have I've never uh, had an official interview process. Yeah, so actually, yeah. I cannot. Yeah. I had some like uh, interviews in in English, but uh, they all say like, "Hey, how are you?" Blah 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 blah. blah. So I feel yeah, yeah, right. I don't need your business English. <laughs> so how do you think I did? Oh, sorry, Namika. I <laughs> thank you. So um, I did it uh, through job hunting. You know. Uh, so, for instance, uh, when I had to decline an offer, I had to write down that email like more politely and carefully. So, I think through that process, I I learned kind of like a business English. <laughs> yeah. yeah, more it's more like a formal situation, you know. Yeah, okay. but in so daily work, have... oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, in daily work, uh, uh, as Tom said, it's more like a casual. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes there's formal uh, situation. Do you sometimes have a talk with your clients? In this case, you do business English, or you can still use casual English. Uh, is that a question for me, or? Uh, oh yes. Yes, uh, Actually, uh, actually, we we don't have like a kind of like a client. You know, yeah. we we are a startup studio. It's you know, uh, it's kind of like an in-house design. So uh, I don't use you know formal. Uh, you know, situation. Hmm. It's not a client. I can say it's a partner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, but we have more casual communication. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Okay. Uh, I think it's very difficult for a non. Uh, in, I mean, non-English speaker or you know, like English non-native English speaker to to master official formal English. So, so I think we should be forgetting, forgetting about, uh, you know, aiming at the polite, uh, you know, perfect English, but you know, everything mm -hmm. that we, we speak is going to be broken English anyways. So, so we don't probably should, you know, we don't bother, uh, you know, speaking the perfect <laughs> for, formal English, uh, but instead I think it's better to speak the casual English uh, in, in a lot casual way. Mm, yeah, I agree. <laughs> we, 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 anyway, we will have mistakes when we talk, so. Yeah, I think it depends on the okay. role and the company. Mm, no, if you work like in a, I don't know, like if you have a translation job, English, Japanese, maybe you might need to very quite uh, English, but otherwise, yeah. I think no, I don't yeah. think it's very necessary. Okay, thank you so much. Unfortunately, I think we are running out of time. Uh, thank you all for coming today. It was really interesting. It was really fun to talk with you guys and um, thank you for uh, watching listening uh, so this is the end of how my we work uh, so uh, can you tell me how did you feel about today namika sure um at the beginning beginning i was uh, nervous but now uh, uh i'm glad talking with you all thank you so much thank you so much and tomo how do you feel yeah 
still having this kind of opportunity. It's uh, it's quite rare for me. And uh, actually, uh, me and Namika talk sometimes, and we know each other's background. But uh, talking with Taku and you, uh, it's uh, really interesting. And uh, actually, um, yeah, as Namika said, uh, I also. Uh, Embarrassed to speak English in front of uh, Japanese people, but uh, <laughs> it was really exciting, and uh, I'm happy to have this event. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So, Taku, how do you feel? Uh, how do you feel about today? Yeah, it was great. I mean, I enjoyed a lot, um, and like uh, like he said, I mean. Speaking in English with Japanese people is a little bit uh, uh, embarrassing, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, you know the topic was uh, very interesting, and we shared a lot of uh, similar experiences. And uh, thanks to your wonderful facilitation, we had a wonderful time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so. This is the end of the event. If you are interested in this event, please go ahead and tweet with hashtag HMWW. If you have any questions or opinions, please tweet with hashtag HMWW. Thank you so much for today. Have a good night. So, Asami, thank you for coming today. Uh, could you introduce yourself a bit to the okay. audience? Yes. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Asami. Um, now I work as a retail futurist. Um, uh, we are, uh, uh, usually, I write the article and I sometimes give some advices to the retail companies. And um, uh, I sometimes uh, support uh, foreigners uh, to introduce uh, Japanese retail things. Um, uh, two years ago, uh, my English level was a uh, beginner, um, but um, now I improved uh, to intermediate level. So today I'm looking forward to share my history. Uh, um, so um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. I think your pronunciation is really beautiful. How oh, did you learn it? Thank yeah. you. How did you learn it? Um, uh, I practiced it. Uh, I've practiced it uh, by shadowing, uh, oh, whispering, okay. and yeah. um, shadowing. Oh, um, but right. I think the experience, uh, the experience I I play the piano is uh, the important uh -huh. <laughs> uh, because um, my English teachers always say um, my ear is good um, oh, to listen okay. to English. Oh, that's interesting. Thank you so much. Okay, so now is the presentation. And uh, are you ready to do that? Okay, first. Okay, okay. so uh, please start whenever you are ready. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Asami. Um, I'm happy to see you here. Uh, and today, I'm going to introduce my history of studying English and how did uh, how did it change my life. First of all, uh, as I said, uh, I'd like to introduce my first uh, my career. And my current job is a retail futurist. Um, I presume uh, it's difficult for you to imagine my work because a futurist is very rare. Uh, real job, um, I, um, and I'm always uh, asked about it, uh, this job. Um, actually, uh, my job is a light consultant, but I relatively focus on the future of industry and create a grand design with stakeholders. Um, sometimes I research foreign countries' uh, cases uh, and introduce Japanese cases. Um, 
I hope to be a bridge between Japanese retailers and overseas uh, and share with um, beneficial knowledge. Um, but um, nowadays, um, I work uh, with uh, a foreign uh, foreign people. But um, when I started uh, to study, uh, when I started to study English. Um, I have never imagined current situation uh, because just two years ago, uh, my English level was bigger, bigger class, uh, and lower than Japanese average. Uh, when I um, when I checked the score, I took the. Uh, I took the test. Um, I was so shocked uh, because uh, I thought I was good at English, but reality is um, it was misunderstand. Um, after that, I studied hard and improved my English uh, English skill. Uh, in this chart, uh, it show uh, it uh, it seems that. Um, Grown smoothly, uh, but there were a lot of signs and quite many times. Uh, this is not an uh, exaggeration. Um, to be honest, um, I still sometimes cry for studying English to feel that um, I don't uh, have enough ability to use it fluently. And for two years, um, I have stopped studying English several times uh, due to illness, hard work, and low motivation. Um, but I had returned every time. Uh, for, uh, from this experience, uh, now I'm convinced that the most imp uh, important thing to acquire English is resilience. Um, it is the power to return if you uh, quit studying English. Um, and learning a uh, foreign language is not sprint, it's, a mo it's like a marathon. Um, in this world, uh, you may face many troubles to stop learning, but it's okay. Uh, the important point is to begin these troubles and resume your habit. And um, if you uh, if you get a resilience, uh, 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 if you want get a resilience, I recommend you to have a community uh, to support each other. Um, I also continue to study still well uh, thanks to my English studying community. Uh, I I found it last year. Uh, this is not only language but also other learning learning habitat um, community enhance uh, our resilience and next uh, i'd like to introduce uh, my learning english uh, listening reading speaking writing um, still now uh, i i'm studying like this um, and I usually study three hours. Um, and as you uh, listen to uh, my English, uh, is not perfect, and um, I have to improve my English uh, to uh, to work um, to use English. Uh, and um, but um, even this level, um, I got a lot of benefit. Especially, uh, being able to speak English widened the opportunity of work. Uh, for example, I got a chance to work with foreign famous retail ex uh, experts last year, uh, and I felt there were a few business people who introduced Japanese circumstances to foreigners uh, in the time. And then I decided to. Uh, improve my English to introduce Japanese retailers for overseas. Um, and you don't have to aim at uh, being, uh, being completely uh, opportunity and challenge 
uh, with lazy ads. Um, second, uh, reading English articles also widens my viewpoints. Um, I think uh, that uh, foreign, uh, foreign companies are not just ideal. Uh, sometimes we glorify them like GAFA, um, but they also have a lot of problems and they are just not reported in Japan. Uh, to see flat foreign cases is important ability for me. Um, finally, uh, the big benefit I got uh, is a new goal, uh, which I've never imagined. Um, uh, I never imagined uh, until I began to study English. Uh, when I studied it, uh, I hope to be good at to get our information, but now I have a dream to introduce Japanese information to overseas, and I'm gonna study abroad to deepen my expertise. Uh, studying English took me to place I've never, uh, I've never imagined. Um, so finally. Uh, uh, imagine. Um, finally, uh, I'd like to uh, give you this message. Um, now, thanks to technology, uh, some people say we don't have to study English by ourselves. Um, yeah, and I agree with uh, I agree with that. Um, and as they say, uh, language is just a tool. But language also connects to culture and the way of thinking. So this is the nature of acquiring languages. Uh, so uh, with understanding this, uh, language will take you place uh, you've never imagined. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it was interesting that uh, you had a, a very good experience in English to attend foreigners to to Japanese with uh, Sorry, I, I didn't I didn't catch the word retail retail <laughs> a retail uh, expert. Yeah. Uh, that's quite interesting, and uh, I thought uh, it's interesting that you now you want to introduce Japanese culture to foreigners. Mm -hmm. hmm. That's quite good. Yeah, it's a good motivation to continue studying English. Thank you. Thank you so much.